Welcome back children. Today I am going to take the topic vertebrates under phylum Chordata. Vertebrates are divided into two division agnatha and nathostomata and agnatha has only one class that is cyclostomata and nathostomata are divided into five classes as you have learnt in 9th standard they are physis that is fish, amphibia, reptiles, birds and mammals. But now we are going to bifurcate physis of fish into two bony fish and cartilaginous fish. Bony fish is called ostic thighs and cartilaginous fish is called conduit thighs. So under nathostomata six classes. In 9th standard you have learned five classes because that time you have taken uh, Pisces as a whole. But now we are bifurcating Pisces into conduit thighs and ostic thighs. So under nathostomata we are taking six classes and under egg natha we are having only one class cyclostomata. So we are going to learn all seven classes coming under vertebrates. So let us get started. Now I am going to take a comparative analysis between cyclostomata, cartilaginous fish and bony fish. I told you what is cartilaginous fish? Chondrich thighs and bony fish is called ostic thighs. So, when I am dealing, I will first deal with the distinctive feature which was earlier informed in the previous video, the distinct feature. Second is the body structure and third is the body covering. Okay. Now, first cyclostomata. The distinct feature of cyclostomata is they are jawless and they have circular sucking mouth. So this is the distinct feature of cyclostomata hence it gets the name cyclostomata circular mouth and this mouth is sucking type and it is jawless. Now from this we can guess its mode of life, its habitat. It is attached to the back of other fishes with the help of its sucking mouth it clings onto the, the back of fishes. See you have I have a picture This is it. It is attached to a fish. So this is cyclostomata. See and look at the mouth. The next picture is indicating the mouth. Look at the mouth, the sucking type. They are jawless and they are sucking with some suckers to suck and cling on to the back of fish. So that is the distinct feature. Now getting back to the second feature as I told you. First is the distinct feature, second is the body structure. Look at the body structure. It is elongated. When I zoom, you, I, you saw it is like elongated like a worm. It is elongated. The body is elongated. And you can see that elongated body has some slits. See? Some slits. If I show it in yellow, it will stand out. Some slits on the body, nearly 5 to 16 gill slits. With 5 to 16 gill slits and also it has fins but here you have to remember the fins it has are the unpaired fins we know fish has both paired and unpaired fins but here only unpaired fins so we can guess it is not for locomotion okay see there's a fin here and here also a fin only unpaired fins are found not paired fins Whereas uh, fish in the normal fish unlike uh, cyclostomata they have the paired fins and unpaired fins. See the unpaired fins here, unpaired, unpaired and the paired fins here you have two pairs left and right and then below the eye also you have. So that is in the normal any fish will have paired and unpaired fins whereas cyclostomata has only unpaired fins because its mode of living it is living as an ectoparasite it need not swim. And last aspect is the body cover. So you see the body is very silky, naked. So it is devoid of scales. So from this we can understand there are no scales. Every fish has scales. All fish has scales. But this is devoid of scales. So once again I am repeating the features of cyclostomata. Emphasizing distinctive feature, body structure and body cover. The distinct feature, they are jawless and they have circular sucking mouth. Okay, so therefore it lives as an ectoparasite on other fishes. Then second is the body structure. Look at the body structure. It is elongated with uh, gill slits. See, gill slits nearly 5 to 16 gill slits varies from species to species. Then it has fins. But remember the fins it has is only the unpaired fins. Paired fins are absent. Then the third aspect is the body cover. It is devoid of scales. Clear? 
So, that is a coming on the cyclostomata. Next, we are having the cartilaginous fish and bony fishes. So, first the distinct feature of cartilaginous fish from the name itself you can understand the endoskeleton is cartilaginous. Whereas in bony fish or ostic thighs, the endoskeleton is bony. So that is the distinct feature that distinguishes the two sets of fishes. Next, look at the location of the mouth. From the picture itself, you can see I have taken the picture of a shark and the other case I have taken the, uh, uh, the picture of mackerel. Now you look at the location of the mouth. See if I am highlighting with yellow color, look at the location of the mouth here. But it is look at the location here. So, here it is terminal, see location is just terminal mouth, whereas here is it at the tip, no it is not at the tip, it is ventral, ventrally located, ventrally means lower side, this upper side will be called dorsal and the lower side is called ventral. So, mouth location in cartilaginous fish they are ventral. Whereas in bony fish, they are located at the tip. So, it is called terminal. Next, now look at the respiratory organs. Here, if I am highlighting, you can see some gill slits. Whereas here, is it gill slits? It is gill combs. And these gill combs are covered in an operculum. See, this is a gill uh, operculum. If we open the operculum, you can see the gill combs. So, in cartilaginous fishes, it is gill slits. See, you can see gill slits on the right side and on the left side. Whereas here, it's gill combs or gills covered, discovered by an operculum. Clear? From the picture itself, you can elicit these points. Next feature. Fish, what is the outstanding feature of when you think of fish? It has scales. Now, the scales present in shark, do you feel that it is naked, it is devoid of scales? No, there are scales. If you observe it under the microscope and scrape its skin, there are scales. And these scales are called placoid scales. And the bony fish, it is very visible because we usually, uh, the if edible fishes we consume are the bony fish. We know they have scales and you have seen your mother cleaning the fish and the scales coming out. The type of scales are cycloid or another category tenoid scales. Next feature about the air bladder. One has air bladder, the other one does not have air bladder. So which one will have air bladder? Bony fish will have air bladder, has air bladder. And because it has air bladder, it can stand in any level of the water column. You have the aquarium. In the aquarium, you can see the fish standing still at any level, like uh, as though it's dead. Okay, why? Because the air is filled, uh, the air bladder is filled with air, and therefore it floats. Whereas in cartilaginous fish, air bladder is absent. And because air bladder is absent, at any level, when they go up to the higher level, they have to cont continuously swim and swim and swim. Okay, beating its fins or else what will happen? It will sink because it does not have air bladder. But bony fish, they have air bladder and the air bladder can be inflated and therefore maintains buoyancy. They can remain at any level of the water column. This you must have observed when, because you, you must have seen fishes in an aquarium. They can stand or remain still at any level of the water column because they have air bladder. The air bladder gets filled or inflated with air. Next. Uh, a special feature found in cartilaginous fishes is the claspers. Claspers are equivalent to what uh, humans or animals, mammals have, like equivalent to the penis. It is a copulatory organ. Copulatory organ are organs that helps in mating. Okay, but clas claspers are absent in bony fish. So from this, what can we infer? Because they are having claspers, what can we infer? They are having internal fertilization. 
that is the clasper uh, is present the males and it is used as a copulatory organ it is uh, fixes its uh, the claspers are fixed into the vagina of the female fish and what happen it inseminates the semen is inseminated into the female fish so the function of the claspers is a copulatory organ hence the fertilization is internal but here there's no claspers in bony fish there's no claspers they release the egg the female fish release the egg in the water the male fish release the semen in the water or the sperms in water and fusion of the egg and sperm takes place outside the body in the water column and so this fertilization is known as external fertilization now as i told you internal fertilization always go with which type of development see humans our our fertilization is internal so how is our development direct development the young one is exactly similar to the parent direct development whereas in you know about frogs and all the fusion or the external fertilization is occurring so what type of development we see look at the tadpole does it resemble the adult no so what type of development is that called indirect development so if you correlate with human beings you will remember what type of development okay this was already mentioned so once again bringing the differences between bony fish and cartilaginous fishes so first difference is the distinct feature cartilaginous fish or the scientific name uh, chondrich thighs bony fish or osteic thighs the first difference is with respect to its endoskeleton the endoskeleton of chondrich thighs is cartilaginous whereas osteic thighs the endoskeleton is bony that's the first difference second difference the location of the mouth in cartilaginous fish the mouth is located ventrally that is on the lower side whereas in bony fish the mouth is located at the tip terminal location third difference the respiratory organs are the gills here it is a form of gill slits you can see gill slits on the sides whereas here it is in the form of combs gill combs which are covered by the operculum it is covered fourth difference these are fishes definitely they have to have scales the type of scales present in cartilaginous fish is placoid scales and the type of uh, scales present in the bony fish is the cycloid or tenoid scales clear then fifth air bladder air bladder is absent in cartilaginous fish hence when they reach at any level above the bottom they always bottom dwellers but if they come above a certain level they have to constantly swim all they will sink whereas bony fish they do have an air bladder at any level they can inflate the air bladder and remain still they will not sink sixth feature is the males are endowed the male cartilaginous fish has claspers and claspers are copulatory organs hence what type of fertilization is found they show internal fertilization okay the claspers transmit the semen into the genitalia of the female fish and what happens uh, the female fish uh, delivers so what type of development is that it shows direct development and the type of de uh, reproduction is viviparous 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 like delivery like ours okay not laying eggs delivering giving birth okay so these three points you can get from this point that males are endowed with claspers so what type of fertilization internal development is direct and they deliver the young ones or they give birth to young ones whereas on the other hand in bony fish the claspers are absent hence what happens they deposit the egg and sperm in the water fusion of egg and sperm takes place outside so that development or that fertilization is called external fertilization the development is indirect the young one of the fish is not exact replica of the parent they are called fingerlings next stage fries etc and third important feature what is that type of mode of reproduction oviparous laying eggs clear yeah? so you got the difference so actually if you analyze the difference it can be 5 6 7 8 and 9 but i elicited the last three from the sixth point you have to correlate with the sixth point clear yeah, i hope you have understood the difference between cartilaginous fish and bony fish which are usually asked as compare and contrast these two are coming under the super class physes why they are coming under the super class physes because of the presence of fins for locomotion next 
class is amphibians. Now we are going, now I have taken the next screen or the next template. Now we are going into tetrapods. Tetrapods means the mode of locomotion is with the help of limbs and mainly there are four limbs or two pairs of limbs. So we have amphibia, reptilia, birds and mammals coming under tetrapoda. Okay, so under this again similarly I am going to emphasize on three points distinctive feature, body structure and body cover. So talking about the distinctive feature of reptiles of amphibians sorry amphibians they are called amphibians because of its amphibious nature. So it is getting the name amphibians because it is living it can live both on land and water. So that is the distinct feature of amphibia. The next body structure, the body is divided into two parts, head and trunk and the head what and all features do you see in the, in the head of a frog, it has the eyes, speciality is the eyes, the bulging eyes with two eyelids upper eyelid and lower eyelid we also having upper eyelid and lower eyelid but which eyelid of ours close and opens the upper eyelid but for frog rep, uh, for amphibians and reptiles both the eyelids are movable like this both are movable we have movable eyelids that's a specialty another specialty you've seen about amphibians the tongue we have long sticky tongue all this we have learned in the lower class another specialty is do they have a ear no, they do have but not represented by a ear lobe. Instead, it is represented by a patch, white patch behind the eye. This white patch is known as tympanum. So, there is no ear lobe. Clear? So, you can, uh, if you view through the specimen, you can see the tympanum, white patch behind the eye. Okay. So, the head, the important features of parts in the head is the eye. Which is, which is very bulk, uh, bulged eye with movable upper and lower eyelids. Then the tongue is very long and sticky and the very important the ear, it is not having the ear lobe, there is a white patch behind the eye called the tympanum or eardrum. Now the trunk, the trunk has the limbs, two pairs of limbs and limbs we usually call the upper limb what we have is called four limbs and the lower limb is called hind limbs. So similarly we are having two pairs of limbs, four limbs and hind limbs and definitely because they live both on land and water the limbs are modified for life both on land and water therefore the feet and all are webbed for swimming see between the digits there is a web so that it enables it to swim in water okay now there are some animals only a few most of them take the frog as a typical representative just head and trunk and the trunk bearing the hind limb and a four limbs and you know the way the frog leaps on land and swims in water. But there are some specimens which have a tail. The tail is the post anal tail. Only few specimens. See here salamander. See I have uh, circled the amphibian which has tail, post anal tail. So do not misunderstand this to be a reptile. It is an amphibian. Okay. So this is about the body structure. Now another speciality of amphibians in the body itself is they have a chamber called cloaca. They have a chamber called cloaca. Okay. Into this chamber materials from three different tracts are poured into this chamber. From the urinary bladder, you know what comes from the urinary bladder, urine. Then from the elementary canal, what comes? The excreta after digestion. And then from the genital tract, that is with the female eggs, with the male semen. Okay. So from the genital tract, we have the, if it is male, it is semen gets deposited here. If it is female, it is the eggs that get deposited here. Now from the urinary bladder, the what gets deposited? Urine gets deposited here. Then from the elementary canal, what gets deposited? The undigested waste. All gets mixed in the cloaca. So there is there's no separate chamber for collection of all this. There is a common chamber. In man, we have 
the urine coming getting collected in the urinary bladder from there only it is going out through a separate opening called the urethra then the elementary canal the last rectum and goes out through the anus then we have the genital if it's a females we have the vagina through which it deposited males we have the penis through which the semen is deposited so separate openings for these uh, materials but here what happens everything gets collected in the common chamber and this common chamber is called cloaca and this common chamber has a common opening single opening that is a single opening single opening called the vent so when you analyze a frog it has only one opening posteriorly unlike in humans there is separate opening called the anus then this vagina this uh, the urethra no separate openings there is only one single opening that is the vent and this vent is an opening from one common chamber what is the chamber called the chamber is called cloaca and the cloaca collects materials from the elementary canal what is the material the undigested waste then from urinary bladder what is collected the urine and from the genital tract if it's females it collects the eggs if it's male it collects the semen all is collected in the common chamber called cloaca this is speciality of amphibians and this is uh, given out or excreted through a single opening called vent it does not mean that all these will get mixed and it comes out no if it is the waste that is waste and the uh, urinary uh, and the content of the urinary bladder gets mixed but when it comes from the genital tract it is separate the chamber will collect only the products egg or sperm and it is released out there is no mixing but it is a common chamber clear so cloaca is present so I am just adding this here cloaca is present a speciality of uh, amphibians now getting back to the body cover we know about the body of amphibians they are very slimy so the body cover moist very moist why it is moist because it respires through the skin it is having dual mode of uh, habitat it has moist skin devoid of scales so once again a quick recap of amphibia emphasizing the three points the distinctive feature is that it is amphibious in nature that it lives on both land and water the body structure basically or most of the forms have the body divided the head and trunk the head bears the eyes with movable eyelids the tongue which is long and sticky and the ears represented by a tympanum which is a patch behind the eye then the trunk bears the four limb and high limb and uh, because they live both on land and water the limbs the digits have a uh, web to swim in water and also uh, the limbs are modified to leap for them to leap on land so there are some few forms which have the post anal that is only few salamander for example they have an uh, extension of the trunk called the post anal tail then another feature common to all amphibians they have a chamber called cloaca it is a common chamber that collects urine from the urinary bladder undigested waste from the elementary canal and the gentle products from the gentle from the gentle tract and it is released out through a single opening called the vent then finally the body cover it is uh, moist slimy and devoid of scales clear so amphibians is complete next let us move to reptilia see you are a family of reptiles see look at the reptiles it includes snakes lizards crocodiles turtles chameleon ginkgos etc okay so the distinct feature of reply uh, of reptiles is that they are creepy crawly creatures creeping and crawling that is the distinct feature now about the body structure just like amphibia the body is divided into head trunk and then there is a tail post anal tail now amphibia I said basically head and trunk few forms has a post anal tail but here all of them has these three parts head trunk and post anal tail then exactly like amphibia the head we have the eyes with the movable eyelids we have the tongue with speciality long and sticky and then they have the tympanum same like amphibia the ears represented by the tympanum a white patch behind the eye now the trunk the trunk there are some forms have limbs and some are limbless so two pairs of limbs two pairs of limbs in the forms that have limbs and in snake they are limbless so there are two categories so I will put a slash 
either they are limbless like the snakes or they have limbs if they have the limbs they have two pairs of limbs like lizard they have the four limbs and the hind limbs and lastly all common to reptiles they have a post anal tail clear now next feature is the body cover unlike amphibia which has moist slimy body cover here it is dry the skin is dry and cornified they have a dry cornified skin very dry and cornified skin covered with epidermal scales scutes in some cases shields some snakes and all has shields so clear body cover how the body is dry and cornified covered with scales scutes or shields clear so once again reptilia distinct feature they are creeping and crawling creatures body structure the body is divided into head trunk and post anal tail the head bears the eye with movable eyelids the tongue which is long and sticky and tympanum which represents the ear then the trunk there are two forms most uh, some forms are limbless like the snakes and some have limbs if they have limbs they have two pairs of limbs fore limb and hind limb and they have the post anal tail now talk about the body cover the body cover if the body or the skin is dry and cornified covered with scales scutes or shields clear next moving on to birds you are familiar with birds what comes to your mind the feathers beak and wings okay now the distinct feature definitely that itself presence of feathers wings and beak what exactly comes to anyone's mind about birds is the distinct feature of aves next the body structure the body is divided into head and trunk see just like amphibians but between the head and trunk there is the neck a neck that is very flexible now what do you know about the head it has the eye with beak the from the beak you can guess the type of diet if it is a long beak or if it's a short beak curved beak hook beak sharp beak you can understand the type of diet what it feeds on anyway the parts are the eye what the specialty of the birds eye it shows mono, monolocular vision unlike ours which is binocular if we look at one thing both the eyes focus at that object whereas the birds can focus one eye on the object and the other eye can be independent so both the eyes are independent of one another so it's very difficult to catch a crow to catch a bird from behind because one they can focus in front the other one they can focus at their predator so it's not so easy because of this type of vision called monolocular vision then we know about the beak as i told you the beak is modified to the type of diet available okay next the neck i, I told you it's a very flexible neck and lastly we have the the birds have the trunk the trunk has two limbs fore limb and hind limb the fore limb of all birds are modified into wings that we know fore limbs are modified into wings for flight okay and the hind limbs are modified for walking running swimming perching clasping etc okay so the fore limbs are modified for flying and the hind limbs for walking running swimming if they are swimming on the water it's modified they have webbed feet for swimming perching all birds do perch on branches of tree they do not fall okay clasp on trees so this these are the features of the body structure now a special feature like how i told you special feature found in amphibians is a cloaca here the digestive system has a special feature they have two chambers extra chambers you have learned down in one of the classes there is the crop and the gizzard two extra chambers are found in the digestive system crop to store food and the gizzard to grind the food they are endowed with teeth to grind the food so the birds eat even stones pebbles etc so this grinding takes place it gets crushed between the teeth found in the gizzard so the gizzard is mainly for grinding okay next the body cover the body cover we know definitely the body is covered with feathers clear 
So once again going into the salient features of bird, first the distinct feature it has beak, wings and feathers. The body structure, the body is divided into head, neck and trunk. The head bears the eyes which shows monolocular vision. Then there is a beak which is modified to its type of diet. There is a neck which is very flexible and lastly the trunk which has two pairs of limbs. The forelimbs are modified for flight, they are modified into wings and the hind limbs are modified or for walking, running, swimming or perching or clasping. And lastly I told you the speciality of birds is the digestive system, there are additional two chambers, crop and the gizzard. Then about the body cover, they are covered with feathers and here also they are dry. The body is dry because they do not have glands but there is a gland at the base of the tail. See at the base of the tail. So the skin is actually dry It is, and we know it is covered with feathers but there is a gland at the base of the tail, oil gland at the base of the tail. Can you guess why should there be an oil gland at the base of the tail? Yes, because it has to lay eggs. When it lay eggs for lubrication. So that base uh, at the base of the tail that uh, oil glands are secreted at the time of egg laying so that the shell does not break. It is a lubricant. So only there there is oil glands at the base of the tail. So basically the skin of birds are dry covered with skin. Only oil glands at the base of the tail. Clear? So I hope you have understood Aves. And last is the category we belong to. So last category we have mammals and the distinct feature it gets its name mammalia because of the presence of mammary glands to nurse the young ones. In addition to having mammary glands what are the feature, features it is now the external ear appears see till uh, aves we are not talking about the ear, ear lobe even about the aves also the head has the beak, eyes and the ear which is represented by tympanum. That was not mentioned but I am mentioning here birds also have tympanum, a white patch behind the eye. But only in mammals the external ear appears. Okay, So external ear, mammary glands and the dentition it has, heterodon dentition. Different types of teeth. We know in us itself there is a teeth for cutting, biting, chewing, grinding and tearing incisors, canines, premolars and molars. So that type of dentition is called heterodon. So once again the distinct features is mammary glands to nurse the young ones, external ear lobe or external ears are represented by the ear lobe for the first time it appears in mammals till birds it is a tympanum then we have the type of dentition it is heterodon different types of teeth with different function. Now the body structure the body is divided you can take our body itself of body is going to the head, then the chest region is called thorax and the last part is the abdomen. See basically our body is going to the head, the chest region is called the thorax and the abdomen. Between the head, between the head and thorax what separate the head from the thorax? The neck. And between the thorax and the abdomen, what separates or segregates the thorax from the abdomen? The diaphragm. Clear? So once again the body is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. The head is separated from the thorax by the neck and the abdomen is separated from the uh, thorax by the diaphragm. Now the body cover, the skin has sparse body hairs. Sparse or in bears and all a lot of body hairs. So skin with has. Clear? So that is all about mammalia. Once again the distinct feature heterodon dentition, external ear and mammary glands and hence it gets its name mammalia. Then the body structure is divided into head, thorax and abdomen. The head is separated from the thorax by the neck and the thorax is separated from the abdomen by the diaphragm. And above the body cover the skin has hairs. In addition, uh, the humans or higher mammalia has extra glands, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, tear glands, etc. That is not mentioned in your text, so I just stopped it at the skin with uh, hairs. I hope you have understood up till here. Now we are going to, I am going to bring all the classes to make a comparative analysis. See, we have already dealt with the distinct features of cyclostomata, physis, amphibians, reptiles, 
birds and mammals. We have also dealt with the body structure of all these classes and also the body cover. Okay, it's already dealt just previously. Now we are going to the heart. Make a comparison of the heart. Okay, so now I'm going to highlight heart. Cyclostomata, the heart is two chambered. Pisces, whether it's cartilaginous or bony fish, again it's two chambered. Amphibia, the chambers are three. And reptilia, except crocodiles, it is three chambered. Aves, again four chambered. And mammals, four chambered. You'll are familiar with it because in 10th you'll have learned the number of chambers. Then respiratory organs. In cyclostomata, it is the gill slits. In Pisces, it is the gills and I have told you in one it is the gill slits which are exposed, in the other one is the gill combs which are covered. Then in amphibia, because they live both on land and water, they have two respiratory organs, the moist skin and the lungs. Lungs and moist skin. Then reptilia, lungs, aves, lungs and mammalia also, lungs. So that is the respiratory organ. Now fertilization. In cyclostomata, the fertilization is external. So, fertilization is external. How will be the reproduction? Oviparous. And the development is indirect. See, all these go hand in hand. If it is external fertilization where the egg and the sperm is fusing, definitely what type of mode of reproduction? We have to deposit the egg and the sperm. So, we call that oviparous. And the development of the young one is indirect. So, external oviparous and indirect development is shown in cyclostomata. But look in Pisces, I have already dealt with it, bifurcating it into chondritis and ostictis. So we have two options, external and internal. External is in the case of bony fish, internal is in the case of uh, cartilaginous fish. Then oviparous, viviparous. Oviparous I have already dealt is in the case of bony fish, viviparous in the case of cartilaginous fish. Then direct development is in the case of, again there is a slash, direct development is in the case of uh, cartilaginous fish, whereas indirect development is in the case of bony fishes. So that is already taken under chondritch ties and ostic ties. So I have given two options coming under Pisces. Now amphibians, we know we are very familiar frogs, legs, egg outside. So fertilization is external. Uh, I mean the mode of reproduction is oviparous and the development is indirect. The tadpole, it is indirect, not at all resembling the adult. Now coming to reptilia, fertilization is internal, mainly internal. Then oviparous, they lay eggs and the development is direct. Most of the forms, there are some forms like viper, which shows vivipari, they give birth. Okay, only in the case of viper, they show viviparous. Now coming to aves, here it goes against the universal rule. If it is internal, it should be um, vivipari and the development should be direct. Here, it's, though it is internal fertilization, the fertilization is internal. The, it is injected into the genitalia of the female bird, but it is not viviparous, it is not giving birth, it is laying egg oviparous and the development is direct. The young bird is resembling the adult bird, except that some birds are not endowed with feathers at the time of birth. So remember for birds, internal fertilization, but ovipary and direct development. And finally mammals, most of the mammals, almost all are mammals, internal develop, internal fertilization, vivipari means they give birth and the development is direct. Okay, but we have platypus, we have some examples which deviate from this egg laying mammals. But I am talking about the majority of members, they show internal fertilization, viviparous that is they give birth and the development of the young one is direct. So this is a comparative analysis of all the classes in the form of a table. So I expect you all also to draw it in a tabular form, landscape with all these features, one distinctive feature, two body structure, three body cover, fourth heart, fifth respiratory organ, sixth fertilization, seventh reproduction and eighth development. With all these eight parameters give the features of the different classes. Pisces you bifurcate it into chondritis and ostic phase. I hope you have understood all the salient features of all the classes coming under vertebrata. Thank you.